Hey, you caught me at the right time. Oh my. So yeah, the purpose of my tutorial show is also that I myself get better and I want to do a lot about the basics. And beginning today with shading techniques. I'm going to show you several techniques that you can use. It's not gonna be all of them, but I give you a basic overview. All right, so I have here 16 squares that I'm going to shade with various techniques. Starting with the most realistic style, I'm going to put down these levels of gray, starting with a very dark one and progressively going to the brighter levels. Just very quickly. Until we get to the brightest part. And this already looks okay. What I can do is also to blend in the gray levels. And uh, we can do this by doing this up and down movement to have a very smooth transition. Uh, or you do this circle in moves to give it a little bit more texture. And I'm not doing too much of blending, so I keep a little bit of the original texture. And if you use traditional tools, you can use maybe a dry brush or, or your finger to smudge the charcoal or the graphite of your pencil. The next one is very simple. It is just a simple block of gray. And this would already be a shade. Um, maybe in a comic style or manga style. Um, what you can do is also to blur the edge of it. It looks nice. And what you can also do is add more levels of grey to it. Like here for example, a darker level and a high contrast. And I can also blur the edge of it. And you can basically put down as many levels as you want to. However, I recommend to use only one or two levels. Otherwise it gets too much and it doesn't look good anymore. For the next one, I'm going to put down again this gray area like this and what I've often seen is that the shadow is outlined like this for example and it gives the edge of the shadow a little bit more definition and I've often seen it in colored shading it gives it a nice touch what you can also do if you use digital tools is to use a gradient tool simply putting down this very smooth transition and it's quickly done. However, it looks a little bit artificial. Um, if it's good for the style you're using, then it's fine. However, if you're shading more complicated shades, then using this is not really appropriate and you would have to use the airbrush or something like that. The next part is hatching. It is drawing lines, parallel lines, at the same distance, with about the same thickness, in a very quick manner. To tell you a little bit about hatching, first of all you want to do it quickly. If you draw lines too slowly then it kind of gets shaky and this is not what you want, but instead be quick and then your lines get straighter. Also only use the natural movement of your hand, do not try anything unnatural like this, okay? If you do this then it's fine, if I'm using a different angle then it gets very complicated. So, in order to draw the lines in a different angle, do not adjust your hand to the angle, adjust your paper or your workspace to the angle. And what you do is you simply rotate like this, and now it's much easier to draw the lines. Always keep that in mind. And you can very quickly and very easily do this. It's a little bit annoying to always turn around, but it helps a lot and you should get used to it. What you can also do is to follow the curvature of the surface you are drawing on. Like for example here we have a cylinder and what I'm going to do is add a little bit of shading to it and I follow the curvature 
of the cylinder and by doing so it actually adds to the three dimensionality of this object. And I'm doing this very quickly. I'm not very good at it, but it's close enough. Okay. And as you can see, it makes it look much rounder now. Now let's get back to the squares and what you can do to have a transition to the darker areas is to add more lines in a different angle to it. And this is called cross hatching. For example, here I'm just drawing them straight down and then maybe like this. Okay, and there you have already a transition. What I've also often seen is, especially in mangas, that if you have the simple hatching here, that again the shadow is outlined like this with a very light line and it gives it a little bit more definition about the edge of the shadow. What you can also do to increase the darkness of the area you're hatching is by decreasing the distance between the lines. Like for example here I'm drawing them very close to each other, many of them even touching and makes, it makes this very dark area. And as I get more and more to the brighter areas, I draw them more apart from each other. Until they have a very wide distance between. And there are only a few of them left. Like this. What you can also do is to vary the thickness of the lines. First I'm drawing them with very high pressure and it makes these very thick lines. And as we get to the brighter areas, I decrease the pressure I'm drawing with until we get very thin lines. Now I'm only slightly touching. And there we go. What you can also do is to draw the lines with a descending pressure. And first starting with very high pressure and then releasing the pressure. And it makes it look like this. And depending on what kind of tools you use, traditional tools, um, or the settings of your program you are using, this can look very differently from each other. So I'm just going to darken it here and make it very sloppy, but I think I get the point around. But also a possibility is to just draw some squiggly lines, zigzag, uh, at first with a very high pressure, very close to each other, like this, and as you get to the brighter areas, release the pressure, draw them more loosely. And it also works. Gives it an interesting kind of texture. And you can use you can use circular moves or just some total chaotic lines. It's totally up to you. Another possibility is to give it some kind of interesting texture. Uh, like for example here, I'm going to turn and give it this interesting pattern with wearing these four lines drawing them vertically and horizontally. This is very quickly done and looks very interesting. Maybe for some sort of woven surface like for example a basket or some clove. And as we get to the brighter areas you could release the pressure or you just simply draw less lines, like now I'm decreasing to 3 lines per section. And now only 2. Uh, 
and there we go. And we have already a nice transition, it looks interesting. What you can also use is some kind of spray. If you use traditional media, then you can use a brush and splatter the paint on it and you cover up the areas you don't want to splatter on. And here for example, I'm starting with a very light area just touching and spray more and more to the dark areas. And it has a very interesting texture to it, it's a very noise-like texture and you can give it some sandy surfaces or rocky surfaces. And you can use all sorts of brushes. Here for example I have more of a blurred spray here. It's very light at first and as I put down more and more it gets darker and darker like this. And it's a very interesting texture. If you use digital tools then you can of course get totally crazy and use whatever you want as a spray. Like here for example I have some little hearts that I'm spraying on. At first just a few little ones and as we get to the dark areas oh it's going to get out of control. Oh my god so many hearts. Ugh. There we go and it's also some kind of transition. Another technique you can use is to use tones. Like here I'm going to select the area I want to shade and Manga Studio has this kind of option that you can put down a tone to the area you selected. Here for example I can adjust the density, it changes the size, therefore the darkness of the area, of the, uh, I can change the angle and also the number of lines and what kind of type I'm using. Here very basic, just circles and let's use it. And there we have a very simple shade already and what you can do is to give it a transition is by so called tone scraping and this is like like a spray so, and you scrape off more and more of this tone layer and give it this kind of transition and has a very interesting texture to it and I'm going to increase a little bit more from here and there we go. If you use traditional media then you can use tone foils. They are probably a little bit more expensive. I never used them so I don't really know anything about it. And again you can get very crazy and put down whatever tone layer you want. Like here for example I'm going to switch to, hmm, I have a lot of options here. Let's choose hearts. Uh, make it a little bit smaller maybe. Um, there we go. Okay. And we have a lot of hearts. What you can do to give it also a transition is again to use the gradient. And there we go. Alright, so these are the 16 different techniques you can use for shading. It's totally up to you what you want to use and as I said before, these are not the only techniques. There are many more. You can use these to develop your own kind of shading style. It's completely up to you. Just have fun with it. Alright, thank you for watching. This was only the beginning and I'm going to continue with more tutorials about basics like shading. And as always, if you have any questions, feedback or requests for me, then please let me know in the comment section. Alright, have fun drawing. Wrong! No, 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 it's wrong! Don't eat me! Oh god. There, there, there. There, can you see it? Can you see it? It's right in the middle of my hand. There. No, not the fingers. Don't eat my fingers. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. Yes. No. You both are so stupid. Come on, it's right there in the middle of my head. What's wrong with you? Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. no! 
Oh, ah, finally, God. Another one. Ah, 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 not my fingers. Ah, you monster. No. no. Don't eat me. Eat the thing. Ah, God. You're not getting anything. Ah, 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 get, go away from me. Ah. 